threat to the United States is a threat to Canada, to our trade, to our interests, to our values, to our common civilization. Does the deal mean a threat to national sovereignty? Well, I know some people don't like it. It's a loss of national sovereignty, but it is a simple reality. So we commit to expanding our management of the border to the concept of a North American perimeter. That means working more closely to improve border security with better screening, new technologies, and information sharing among law enforcement, uh, as well as identifying threats early. Hello everyone, this is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth. In the last few weeks, the agenda for a North American Union has been fast-tracking its way under the radar in regards to the security perimeter deal that is currently going on down at the border of Canada and the United States. This is precisely the deal that was outlined by the Canadian Council of Chief Executives and the Council on Foreign Relations back in 2005 when they released their document titled Building Towards a North American Community. In just six days from now, President Obama, Stephen Harper, and Felipe Calderon are going to be meeting in Honolulu to figure out a way to sell this idea to the public. Officials say the two leaders will launch formal negotiations to make the flow of people, goods, and services much easier while enhancing perimeter security. Sources say the leaders want negotiators to conclude a sweeping deal within the year. It would mean joint border inspection facilities to speed up the movement of goods, the relocation of U.S. food inspectors at Canadian plants and vice versa, greater sharing of intelligence, and harmonizing regulations on everything from food to manufactured goods. This deal will no doubt pave the way for the NAFTA superhighway, which is currently under construction. The Canadian hub of this trade corridor is called Centre Port Canada and it is located in Winnipeg. Some of the things that are going to be called for in regards to this deal is real-time tracking of all travelers through your enhanced driver's license, which now contain a radio frequency identification chip. There have also been reports about the Americans monitoring the border with military predator drones. Well, you've probably seen one of these in the news on some military mission in a country far away. The United States uses remote-controlled aircraft to patrol part of the border with Canada as well. But as our Red Sharon discovered, these Predator drones are expanding their range in a big way. They could soon be conducting 24-hour surveillance from coast to coast. The Americans focus on security and the Canadians focus on access. So now, the two sides are trying to figure out how they can have both. The declaration marks the start of this endeavor, not the end. This whole agenda is being sold to us on this idea that it's going to be beneficial for both nations for trade and also security at the border. At the same time that all of this is going on, the federal government has just announced its biggest trade deal since 1994's NAFTA, which is called CETA, the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement. This is being sold to us on the idea that it will eliminate trade tariffs and lower the costs of goods and services. If this has anything like the Chapter 11 clause in the NAFTA agreement, the European Union will essentially be able to sue the Canadian government should it implement uh, new changes to protect Canadian standards. NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, was set up to fail. And there is no doubt that the CETA deal will also be set up to fail so that they can introduce this idea of the European Union and the North American Union joining together into a transatlantic union. Globalization is and always has been the problem. Let's not forget, it's all about problem, reaction, solution, or order out of chaos. You create a problem, economic turmoil in Greece, in Italy, all over Europe. You then generate your desired reaction, which is often, this is unacceptable, what are you going to do about it? And then you offer your solution, the centralization of power, into fewer hands. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Saturday, November 12th. 2011, I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also on YouTube, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. Global Government News has a Facebook group, over 109. 
10 members now. So you can go in there and check that out. The links uh, for all these articles uh, will be in YouTube's video description along with the Twitter and uh, Facebook accounts as well. All right, let's keep moving here. Canada, Mexico, I uh, joining U.S.-led Pacific PAC. So we just heard about the uh, transatlantic um, agreement. Uh, what was it? CERTA, uh, CETA. And um, that would take, what, the North American Union and um, the European Union and merge them together and that. And this is a similar thing. Of course, it's all um, about, f what, ooh, free trade. Is it fair trade? No, it's free trade. Do you know what free trade means? It means that um, these uh, rich nations, because we're so freaking rich over here. I don't know how it feels for you to be rich, but to me, it does. I, I don't really feel it myself. But either way, we're rich. And in these uh, poor countries, well, these rich countries um, go to these poor countries like uh, down here, uh, Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, and that, and they exploit their workers who are desperate to work for basically pennies, pesos, whatever their currency is, right? And uh, that's called uh, f free trade, it says here. And it, it almost makes you think that we have a free market. Well, we're not even close. UK Treasury prepares for economic Armageddon. And the funny thing is that all these, uh, not all, but a lot of these Occupy Wall Street protesters are protesting against what they think is lack of regulations and um, and uh, capitalism in a free market when it's not it's anything but a free market. It says here, UK Treasury prepares for economic Armageddon if Euro falls apart. So they do. it was doomed to fail, uh, the European Union. And, of course, Ireland joined in, and look what happened to them. And they're just going to try to keep it going. And the point is not to be an efficient system. It's just to be a system for the banks, by the banks, for the banks, so that uh, companies can – our uh, companies, yeah, countries, which are companies or corporations, can go under – and then the uh, the farmers, the, the 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 slaves, basically the tax slaves, can go to work and get back on the farm and work off all that debt, and they'll never get out of it. And these people will get promoted. And it says here, um, a Chinese rating agency threatens U.S. with new debt downgrade. And then we have this: why your tax might surge next year, your tax bill. And it talks mostly about your income tax, which I've talked about before. It's, it has nothing to do with uh, taxing your income. Actually, it's a tax on spending your money, believe it or not. Most people's jaws would drop if they, if they knew that, that you're actually being uh, – this income tax is actually going straight to the Federal Reserve System, the private cartel of banks who has a monopoly on currency so that you can only use their currency. You like that? That was divvied up uh, almost – almost – uh, what, 100 years ago, so 98, 99 years ago, uh, on, uh, what, Christmas weekend, on a weekend, uh, you know, very quiet, hush-hush little deal there. And they said a lot of people wanted it, but, of course, they were propagandized, and they were told that that's what they wanted, that's what was the best thing, like the bailout in 2008 and the stimulus, right? And has it helped? Has it prevented recession? No, actually, it's made it worse. Um, and so they want to borrow another trillion dollars. But... Um, just for being able to spend your money, the little uh, Federal Reserve notes of debt, you have to pay a tax to the private banks like J.P. Morgan Chase and all them for that. Okay, moving on. Gitmo costs $800,000 per year per detainee, and that makes you wonder what uh, eventually is going to be coming down the road for these uh, people who are being starved of oxygen. It's a new form of torture. They actually starve them of oxygen with little masks and stuff like that. And uh, it's, it's pretty harsh. You always hear about waterboarding, but you never hear of oxygen deprivation. So what are these guys going to be doing? Well, remember we covered this. One year of prison costs more than one year at Princeton. That's a lot of money to be keeping these guys. Um, probably half of them are in there for selling pot or whatever, non-victim uh, or victimless crimes. I'm sorry. There's no victim. It's just some statute code or stupid law. And um, we have here Riverside County, California, do charge prisoners $142 per day of their stay. So now we all know that these guys aren't going to be able to uh, pay this off, right? Because once you go through this um, uh, uh, education system, which allows you to become more of a criminal by the time you come out, um, what happens? Well, you're going to owe a lot of money. Well, you might as well start working uh, working it off right now. Washington employs inmates to pick apples. We covered this before, but this is what I was getting at. These Gitmo uh, detainees uh, may actually be working for Walmart or Target or something uh, in the future. Uh, maybe they'll be picking apples. So that's the future is getting uh, free labor. 
And uh, yeah, and of course what they said was because of the immigration laws that they have a lack of workers. Well, down in Georgia, actually, they changed it because of the immigration laws and stuff like that. There's actually immigrants um, that are going to jail, and then they're having the prisoners, the same people, the immigrants, work for free. You see, see? it's a good system. And uh, this new economic order is it's a great system. Jefferson County, Alabama, files biggest uh, municipal bankruptcy and uh, talking about investors refinance and sewer bonds. That sounds uh, tasty. Next up, for Bank of America, debit fees extend to unemployment benefits. And that's right. The state has contract with Bank of America to administer its unemployment benefits. And it goes on there, and it says that uh, in order for her to use her Bank of America prepaid debit card on which the state deposits her funds, um, she basically has a hard time doing that and uh, going on there. And it says that Bank of America recently aborted um, plans to charge ordinary banking customers $5 a month to use their own money. You like that? Remember, I've already talked about this. You're using your own money that they loan out uh, 10, 100 times and make money off your actual cash that they don't actually have. And then they're going to charge you $5. Well, there was public outrage, which there should have been, so they scrapped it. But they've quietly continued to mine other sources of fees, including the jobless people. And, of course, what they uh, – all these banks have secured contracts to provide access to public benefits in 41 states. These contracts typically allow banks to collect unlimited fees from merchants and consumers. Moving on here, Democrats offer $1 trillion tax increase in super committee, which is very democratic. It was by the people, for the people, right? No, unfortunately, it was inside room 200, the, uh, the room of the super committee. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's pretty stupid. They're talking about how they're tucked away, um, locking themselves away in, uh, in the secret, basically. It, it, the super committee is the secret committee. That's what you need to know. Inside Africa to miss Gaddafi's money, but not as meddling. They call it meddling, but actually what the guy was doing was trying to unite Africa. He gave up on the Arabs because the Arabs, Arabs kept laughing at him while he was telling them that they would be sacked, that they could actually be assassinated, and that they would be uh, double-crossed by the people they were shaking hands with which they are, and they will be, and he was right. And um, so talking about meddling and stuff like that, he's done a lot for Africa, and he tried helping out the black Africans, and now they're saying that they're uh, that they just want his money, they don't really care, and that they were bored of his pontificating speeches and stuff like that. And what was it? Oh, a single African currency made from gold. That's right. According to a few observers, this is well known too, Gaddafi's plan was to quit selling Libyan oil in U.S. dollars and demand payment and said in gold-backed diners. So you see, he was trying to unite uh, Africa. It says uh, Italy's Berlusconi to quit after austerity law vote. So yeah, he's going to go ahead and quit. Maybe he'll be working at the uh, at the central bank like Mr. Papadamos of Greece, the former vice president of the European Central Bank and ex-governor of uh, the Bank of Greece uh, is going to be heading up Greece now. So you see, you do that and then you head out. Like, just like in uh, Italy and here, you know, it's going to pass and then you get out of town, right? Just, just like uh, Treasury Secretary Geithner was supposed to get out of town, too. He said he was, but then he didn't. But Sarkozy urges new Greece prime minister. Uh, that's because I don't think he did what he was supposed to be doing. Uh, Geithner, that is. Sarkozy urges new Greece uh, prime minister to deliver on Euro Bank. Ex uh, European Central Bank, uh, uh, in, uh, what was it, Bank of Greece or whatever? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure he's going to go forward with it. Generation jobless, it says young men suffer worse as economy staggers. They're talking about these uh, individuals here. Then the, it says neither man has been able to find steady work since Mr. Preston's marriage broke up and he moved back in with his parents. An increasingly common pattern for jobless young men it goes on here for such men. High unemployment is eroding their sense of economic independence. Their predicament reflects that of a generation of Americans facing one of the weakest job markets in modern history. We're at risk of having a generation of young males who aren't well connected to the labor market, who don't feel strong ownership of community or society because they haven't benefited from it. Walmart, Walmart seeks to use medical services to lure shoppers and boost traffic. They want to be your medical doctor. That's right. Julia Gillard wants you to keep working. Goes on here and says that she used an international forum to deliver a tough message to Australians' workforce after passing a carbon tax she vowed to not pass. Uh, 
while she was campaigning, you'll have to keep working beyond retirement age. So I hope you like that, Aussies. Number of foreclosures are up nationwide. Army veteran and his wife die in a tragic suicide pact after becoming too poor to live through the winter. Moving on here, a call to donate winter fuel payments. It says over 50s group says that 25,000 older people died in the U.K. last year uh, due to the cold. And wood stoves on the rise in the U.S.